Okay, this is a bonus video for Akira who likes to get in people's business when they're eating. Now for dogs, it's inappropriate for them to be within seven feet of anybody's eating. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can teach your dog to respect or stay behind an invisible line. Now I went over the escalating consequences that I used to disagree, uh, to disagree with dogs on what a behavior. I'm gonna drop treats in here to create a lure for the dog to wanna go in. When you're feeding him or you guys are eating, that's gonna be the lure, so you won't have to drop the treats on the ground. Now the first thing I wanna do is I always wanna be force free and I always want the dog to be able to do it. So I'm gonna show her that I have a treat, I'm gonna roll it outside the boundary and say out. And she goes back and I might throw it this way outside the boundary, out. Now I can click through this or I can just say the word out. So now what I'm saying is out, leaving this area is rewardable. Normally all the good stuff is in here. So why would I want to leave? I don't get any benefit from leaving. So we just throw the treats. And I usually do this for every doorway or portal in the house. One of the rules is she shouldn't be allowed in the kitchen when we're preparing food. You do the same exact exercise. So I usually go to every room in the house. Let's say this is the kitchen and this hose represents the edge of the kitchen. So I throw the treats out, out, and then say the command word. I do two outs. And if this is a big open floor plan, I might go out here, out here, out here, out here, or if it's around the table, around every direction. So I'm saying vacate the kitchen. Then I would go to the bedroom. Now this is the bedroom, this is the doorway. I throw the treat out, she goes out, and I say out again. I do two outs for every doorway or portal in your house. Then what I do is I go outside. Let's say this is the kitchen now. Kitchen. So now I've created a command word to vacate any room as well as to go to every room. So I'd recommend you do I have, have like three treats for every area that you're gonna do and then multiply it. And then basically walk around your house and do this. And each one of you guys does this once or twice a day. After a couple days, you can say out, then she exits. Then you give her the treat after she exits. We throw it at first to create a motivation, but after all, she'll do it on her own. Okay, so I always wanna be able to tell the dog to leave first. So the second thing I'm gonna do is use the escalating consequence I went over off camera. So uh, I'm gonna kinda escort her out. My authority's pointed at her. So whatever direction my hips and shoulders are going is where my authority goes, so it's gonna to need to be pointed at her. I take a step backwards. I take a step backwards and I pause. If she comes forward, I say no by marching at her and kissing at the same time. If she stays paused, I can take another step backwards. Now we can make it a little bit more challenging. Now this is a big open space. Most of us just have a little doorway to our house or to our kitchen or whatever, it's easier. Mm -hmm. If you have a big open area, you might have to put some chairs down or some cardboard or something to create a choke point. Now see how she's just staring at, she's not looking at me, she's objectifying the treat. And she's probably gonna whine and whimper when you do this a little bit, but you have to let her know that whining whimper never works. And I'm trying not to cross this line. When I'm doing this, I, if I cross the line, she's not gonna know where the line is. Mm -hmm. The way she identifies is that's where I stop. So she looked at me, so I took a step backwards and I paused. She's looking at the trees. I'm waiting for her to re-engage with me. And when she crosses it, you rush at her like she stole something. Don't stop when you get to her. If you bump into her, you bump into her. After a while, she'll learn, I have to stay behind the boundary. So dogs learn by probing, waiting for you to say no. So I take another step back and I pause. Now she's panting really heavily because it's outside, but also because this is stressful for her. Sits, I take a giant step backwards. Now technically she's breaking the law because she's across the line, <laughs> but she is respecting the spirit of the law, so I'm gonna allow that. If she starts belly crawling, I would not allow that. <laughs> so now I'm gonna make it even harder. And again, you have to be kind of, the suddenness is what'll move her away. I don't wanna torque her like I just did there. I needed to move moving faster. Take a step back. So it's the suddenness of the movement, which I don't really can't achieve because of where we're at, but you want to be moving very suddenly rapidly on. She's stationary, take a step back and I pause. Wait for her to look at me, make sure she's not moving, take another step backwards and pause. Now, before we started this, I'm guessing if I would have said, could I drop like 25 <laughs> treats on the ground and have her stay away from it, you probably would have said no. So what we're doing is we're creating a scenario where she can practice the behavior that we want. So when you're feeding him, I would use this and have him eat in different areas. So I, she crossed it, I was gonna go there, but I figured she was gonna do that. So when she does that, if this is the dinner table, uh -huh. now I can sit down and start eating my food, but I'm keeping my hips kind of pointing in this direction. And at any point that she gets up, I have to be willing to stop what I'm doing and race towards her. 
At first, you're going to have to interrupt her quite a bit. After a while, she's going to know he will never, ever give up. He's always going to not let me have the treats. So it's not even worth challenging. So then what she does is she kind of just starts hanging outside the boundary. One of the little tips is to practice to create a scenario. So if we're having him eat a snack and you're here watching and mom is handling him, your job is to bird dog the dog. And so the dog crosses the threshold and you're stuck. And so she can be there shepherding him. Um, when you're actually going to eat a real meal, what I usually do is I microwave or doing this in your kitchen is I would microwave a piece of bacon in the kitchen. Then I put it in the counter and I first do the out command. Then I microwave the bacon, put it on the counter and the dog, every time the dog tries to come in, I rush towards it and I stop at the boundary. And then once the dog lays down, then I pull out my dishes, my other ingredients to cook. My, I do my meal prep and I get that all stuff down, but I can watch him out of the corner of my eye because when we're cooking, we're facing this way. We're not paying attention. The dog crosses the threshold and we miss it. So this way, what we do is we create a scenario where we can help him warm up. So once he's actually, or she, excuse me, and once she's actually warmed up and she sits or lies down, we put the bacon away and we continue cooking. It sure looks like I was cooking. It smells like I was, he was cooking. He's in the place that they cook, but as soon as I cross the line, he is rushing at me. And every time I stay outside the boundary, he does it. <laughs> so clearly what he wants is me to stay outside the boundary. And the whining and whimpering, for this, if you ever put treats on the ground, she shouldn't, don't pick up the treats and give it to her after. So I'm mirroring her. She stood up, so I stood up. I didn't take a step towards her. You saw I lurched, mm -hmm. but I didn't because she didn't cross the threshold. So this is like a game of tag. Outside of the garden hose in this case is base. She is safe on base. As soon as she crosses here, she can be got and I rush towards her. So what I would have you guys do is practice having your son eat here, eat over there, eat at different parts of your house so that she can practice. Look at that, there's a tree three feet away from her. She can see it, she can smell it, and she's not going for him because we've taught her what to do. So I'm watching very carefully because that's pretty close. That's is pretty advanced. Mm -hmm. And so if you put it, if you let her get her too close, she's like, I'll just take it because I'm already pretty much here. <laughs> so I wouldn't do it with treats on the ground. I would do it with him having the treat or the bacon. Now, for the high chair, I have a video on my website. If you search for high chair on my website, it'll show you a video where you can actually put the dog in a high chair, create a boundary like this, let the child throw as much food as he wants on the ground and the dog doesn't cross the boundary because of this exercise. Then when you get done, you pick up the avocado, raisins, and, and uh, grapes because those are toxic to dogs. And then you invite the dog to come over and I'm gonna allow the dog to do it at this point. Akira, housekeeping, housekeeping, housekeeping. So every time she licks it up, you say the word housekeeping. So she knows when you're eating, I have to go out here outside. And then I get to watch the kid throw all the stuff down. And I'm like, oh man, it's so hard not to go get it. But I know that afterwards, mom's going to clean up all the stuff that's not safe. Then when mom or dad or whoever the human is, gives me permission. Until then, I'm practicing self-restraint. But as soon as you say housekeeping, I run over and I start licking them up. And every time I lick them up, you say housekeeping or maid service or whatever it is. So that becomes the command word to go and clean up the food. Now, when he drops the food, what happens? The dog doesn't come over right away. That will take away his interest in dropping the stuff because the dog's become the first interactive toy for, uh, for children. Yes, you're smarty pants. All right, <laughs> so this is Akira. Sit. Only say it once. So I said it once, she didn't do what I wanted, so she doesn't get it. Now I could do two things. I could just sit here and outlast her and just wait. As soon as she sits, I would give her the treat. Or if she walks away, that's fine. She doesn't get the treat. Akira, sit. Sit. This is my buddy Akira, and these are some tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that doesn't invade, uh, doesn't respect your personal space and invade your boundaries.